Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the America's Netball Men's Netball Championship 2024 here on the gorgeous islands of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. Now, this is game four for the England forms this evening as they take on Grenada, and it's also the halfway mark of the competition. So, to do a quick recap, England had a narrow loss to Jamaica on day one, 30 to 27. They had a phenomenal win against the United States of America on day two, 77 to 11. And they had a very impressive win against Antigua and Barbuda yesterday, 67 to 24. Now, I'm delighted to be joined in the media zone once again by a double trouble duo of Taryn Moss and Lou Granger. How are we doing, ladies? How are you doing, Taryn? Oh, so good. Thank you. So good on the lovely islands of Nevis today. It's looking beautiful. There's less flies around. So, yeah, enjoying it tonight. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, St. Kitts is sweet and Nevis nice. <laughs> so you've been told. So you've been told. How are you doing, Lou? Yeah, really well, thank you. Just enjoying this uh, Caribbean music, to be honest. Just <laughs> jamming up here until the game starts. It is an absolute vibe here on the Caribbean tonight. Now, we've done a little bit of a review of the results so far for England, so let's stick with that review theme. We're going to have a chat about some of the standout performers at this stage of the tournament. So, Taryn, I'm going to come to you first. Starting with a non-England team, so we'll come to England last. Who's grabbed your eye so far and why? Um, so far, we've watched... In fact, I've watched St. Kitts a few times, and we've also watched... Um, St. Vincent's um, and both of those teams have had a couple of players that have been really good so there was a wing defence who started who actually plays wing defence wing attack for St. Kitts and he's been really versatile really disciplined he looks quite a young player I don't really know his name but he's he's been a bit of a standout player for me and um, because sometimes it can get a little bit hectic on court but he seems to be really controlled and it's really nice to see. Love that, love that. Lou, how about you from a non-England perspective? Oh, I am fangirling the goal shooter from St Vincent. He is incredible. Honestly, his take on the ball, <laughs> um, his turn in the air, his split landing. Um, he, he has a lot of flair, but he can also control the game really well. So I can't wait for England to play them and see what he can do there. So I've got my eye on him, yeah. Because they were playing last night, weren't they? And we are sat on the sideline watching them after the England Antigua Barbuda game. And I was... my jaw was on the floor honestly it was the most unreal elevation the landing skills the control it was simply sensational so I think that's a, an excellent choice and from an England perspective who's really grabbed your eye Taryn? Um, I think Jamal has for me Jamal Nicholson he's obviously always been a really really strong player he's super athletic super strong um, but this time I've noticed an improvement in his, in his performances he's been again it's the discipline for me sometimes especially in defence um, when it can get a little bit scrappy but he's come through both feet both hands nice clean intercepts getting his distance and he's I've also seen him um, being able to tip the ball on the shots which I've never seen him do before so he's clearly been working on a couple of extra sk skills which I don't think he needed to do but he's obviously just took his game to another level so super impressed with Jamal Nicholson so far yeah adding more strings to the bow I think his penalty count has gone way down as well so like you say that cleanliness the ability to come round the body completely clean is really quite remarkable and how about you Lou? Um, it's really hard to choose. Um, there, there, there are a lot of standout players, I think, for us, and they've worked so hard. You can't ignore like the control uh, of Jimmy in the middle, but someone who's caught my eye when he's been in the court is Jared Bigley. Like, he's kind of, when he's fired up, you can just see the passion and the fire in him, and he just goes and goes and goes, and he won't stop, and I, I just want to see more of that. I'd love to see a bit more of him on court. I think he's starting tonight, so... Yeah, well, I was going to say, not to give away any spoilers, but he may or may not be starting <laughs> in that wing defence position, so we shall see. <laughs> and last night, of course, they did have quite a big win against Antigua and Barbuda, the England Fawns, but there were patches, particularly in the second half, where it got a little bit scrappy. I think they lost some of their structure, and actually, despite the scoreline, I think they, they may have been a little bit disappointed of how they performed. What did you make of their, their game last night, Taryn? Um, I thought it was difficult to watch at times, because we know that they, they can perform a lot better than what they did. I think there was a lot of lack of control in, in each of the thirds and I think sometimes we need a certain players to stay in there to ground the rest of those players and I think it just got a little scrappier than any of them wanted and it got a little bit out of control so hopefully we'll see that kind of a bit more restrained tonight and a little bit more control um, and I think I think we'll be pleased at the end of the game if we if we see that happening yeah I mean we're, we are really nitpicking here aren't we because it was 67 24 so it was yes. a very confident win but we have high standards high expectations of these guys 
um, and no doubt they have high expectations of themselves as well. And we've seen um, a lot of flair and a lot of different styles of play so far this tournament. Lou, tell me a little bit about some of the Caribbean style of play that we've witnessed so far. Yeah, incredible. Um, I think we mentioned the elevation um, before. Um, all of the Caribbean players, they just can jump so high. Um, we've seen a few errors as well in some of the plays, so a bit of handling maybe. Um, some short passes that we're not quite used to seeing in England, so one to watch as well. But um, a lot of flair too, which has been great to see. Yeah, it's really exciting to see so many different styles of play. Um, we are just going to have to take a little bit of a short break before we bring you the starting sevens because we are just going to have to shift position. So uh, stay where you are, stick with us. We'll be back with you in a couple of minutes just while we rejig ourselves. suggesting that you go up here because this is the VIP section and we don't know how many VIPs are going to be. So if you don't mind, you can set up over there. Um, we're probably going to set up on this bit here. Okay, okay that's fine. Right. Sorry. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, welcome back. We are repositioned. We're on a slightly different side of the court. So we've got an end on view now as we did in uh, the game against USA. So apologies for that short delay. Now, we were previously talking about the Caribbean style of play and some of the flair that we've seen. I also think speed is a really um, important element for their style of play. Sometimes potentially a little bit uncontrolled, but they can, when it's on, get the ball really quickly down court, can't they, Taryn? Yes, absolutely. Um, in the blink of an eye before we see it, it's, it's, it's gone from one end to the other. And um, sometimes it doesn't look like they're going to be able to catch it, like you say, with that speed that they've got. But they always seem to, because of their athleticism, they seem to be able to hook that ball in, keep hold of it, keep control. Um, but then at times, like you say, it just kind of flies out. So it's just, a, it's just a little bit of kind of reeling that in a little bit again to make sure that they don't lose any unnecessary balls. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to remember as well and to remind everyone that all the countries competing are at very different stages of development in their netball. So you might see um, quite significant score margins, but that's just reflective of where those nations are in terms of their uh, stages of development for the sport. So we're going to take a look at this match then and get stuck into our starting sevens. So for Grenada in goal shooter, we've got Baptiste. In goal attack, it's Hines. Wing attack is Steele. Centre is Wilson. Wing defence is Oxford. Goal defence, Coutain. And goalkeeper is Peters. 
Now for England in goal shooter, we've got Joel Taylor in goal attack, James Firminger, wing attack, Lee Robnett, centre is James Thompson Boston, wing defence, here we go, Lee starting in wing defence is Jared Bleakley, so his first start of the competition. Uh, in goal defence we've got Jamal Nicholson and in goalkeeper we've got James McClelland. And it's a really interesting choice this goal circle, it's so dynamic, it's really really interesting. But so far in the competition we've seen a Nicholson and a, a Tyrell Alou circle. So good to see them mixing it up and trying lots of different combinations. What do you think we can expect from this defensive circle, Taryn? I think we can expect tight discipline again. I know I've said this about 20 times already. <laughs> Obviously a fan of that. But I just think because each of those players, um, I think that specifically um, James McClellan's and Jamal Nicholson have played together for quite a few years now in the Thorns. This is the circle that we're used to seeing. So they're really used to each other. They're used to doing a split circle. They know exactly where each is going to be. And even though... Um, Jamal Nicholson is, is known for a little bit of um, you know hunting that ball mm. down. He still he still gets himself back and makes sure that it's covered so that James isn't isn't left on his own. Um, and obviously um, Lou spoke highly of Jared before the game, and I absolutely um, echo that statement as well. Um, Jared is one of those players where he puts so much pressure on the pass. He might not come out and get lots and lots of flyers, but actually he puts so much pressure on what's happening around him. He causes the errors for the other team. So I think we're going to see a lot of turnover and, and a lot of payback for that for that type of play. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by the decision to put Bleakley out in front in wing defence to start the game. I'm a big fan of this. And also James Thompson Boston, he is a centre wing defence, so it's quite a, a defence heavy lineup, which I'm I'm quite a big fan of myself. And we've seen a lot of James McClelland in wing defence so far uh, this tournament, who provides perhaps a little less see, less speed, but a lot of range. And he just comes from absolutely nowhere, able to get hands in. Whereas Jared, I think, is probably a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. Um, really attacking some balls so I think the, the work that's going to be done out front is really going to set up the likes of McClellan and Nicholson Sorry, in the circle uh, to pick off guys, those balls just, um, yeah nice absolutely I even agree with the defensive centre so comment as well um, because I think especially starting the game it's always better to start with a bit more defence because uh, you just don't know how it's going to go um, to just mentioning Jimmy there over the mic um, but yeah and then obviously if you need to make a change if you need to make an impact you can bring more of an attacking centre on but initially starting with a defensive centre for me is always a great way to start the game they say defence wins championships don't they and Absolutely. attack wins games so. they do indeed so we're going to say farewell for the time being to Lou Granger who is very kindly going to operate our camera for us and then we're going to have a cheeky little switcheroo at half time and uh, Lou will be jumping on the mic so players now just having their introductions onto court. It is of course the England Thorns versus Grenada. And there are some really, really big, built, muscular players here for Grenada. So I think it's potentially going to be quite a physical competition. They're going to be able to hold their space well. They're going to really be able to, to hold that ground. Do you, do you think we can expect a physical game tonight? I think we can expect more than a physical game, absolutely. Like we, we stayed back to watch half of the Grenada game yesterday. Um, and we saw exactly that, didn't we? We saw them to be very strong, very, very long, you know, able to jump um, and, and very kind of stretchy when they can land and they can lunge that leg back. Um, however, I do think sometimes they're used to playing against other taller players. So if we do have a little bit more movement in those days, you know, um, if we've got Joel starting at goal shooter, although Joel's lovely and tall, he can actually move around really quick. And I think sometimes that can put off those those solid, tall, strong uh, defenders. So I think it might actually pay off for us having a bit more of a moving circle. Yeah, I completely agree. And like you say, Joel absolutely can hold, but I actually think his strength is that rotational circle. And we've seen some really strong performances as well from James Firminger, the youngster in at goal attack. His court craft out the front of the circle to work the ball in is just sensational, isn't it? It really is. He's such a lovely player to watch. He's very fluid and actually really calm, you know, for a mm. young player. Um, he doesn't kind of get overwhelmed by the occasion by any means. And with him and Joel, 
Joel is also a very laid back player so both of them can kind of you know they can still move they can both hold they've got a very similar style so actually they read off each other so well mm. so I'm excited to see them playing again together in the day. Yeah, absolutely. I will say though, one of the work-ons for England, having looked at, having the privilege to look at some of the stats from previous games, is that shooting percentage. I think across the board, other than James McClellan yesterday, who I, I think was sort of high 80s potentially, we have had sort of lower shooting stats than they would like, that is for certain. So no doubt that's going to be something for them to work on. And I think as well, you know, we've spoken about that uh, being a little bit defence heavy, sort of going through court. And we've mentioned James Thompson, Boston, our captain. But actually, we almost mentioned him in passing quite a lot. And I, I don't think he gets enough credit for the work that he does and the leadership that he brings. Yeah, absolutely brings that that cool, calm control to the middle third as well as all the way through the court. But specifically when we've seen in other games where it's maybe not gone as well as what we've planned, um, it's because it's become more erratic going from you know a turnover in the goal third, for example, through that centre court. And we've not necessarily had that level of experience all the time. Um, so yeah, he, he absolutely does a fantastic job. We've already seen a deflection on the ball for Grenada as England get us underway with their first goal. One from one for Joel Taylor early. So he'll be happy to have nailed that first shot. Yeah. Grenada then being forced wide on the first phase of the centre pass, struggling for depth a little bit on the second phase. They're doing well to hold them up, England. Oh. Yeah, just caught the back of the player there. Yeah. Quick release on the penalty. Good discipline, Good discipline. from McClellan. We've already seen a couple of tips. Oh, the Grenada centre is just grabbing his foot. Um, we've already seen a couple of tips from the Grenada players so far. Um, so I'm just hoping that they kind of pick that up and adjust their game. You know, we don't need any kind of loose, long balls, really, because these guys are just going to pick them off so quick. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I think the ability of the England players to, to drop back and get themselves up in the air, it, they make it look like the space is on. We saw a lot of offline defence yesterday yeah. and it was so, so successful. And there's that rotation of the circle. Firminger opting for a higher shooting percentage position. Yes. And there we go. The classic swing. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely play there. And I think that was good direction from Firmager then. He told the, them to swing the ball. He held his space long enough to then be able to time the pop. Lovely control there from Lee. And again, just to remind you that there will be a game on the other court. So you might see a ball bounce across every now and again. They're just The Jamaicans are just warming up at the moment. I'll uh, see if I can get confirmation of exactly what game that is. It's going to be Jamaica... USA, I think. Versus yes. yeah. USA. Ah, oh, they're in the white yeah. kit today. They've got so. an away kit, yeah. Didn't recognise them. Grenada then for the penalty. Placement a little bit askew. Thompson Boston manages to get a hand to it. Very kindly collects the ball. I think what I like it so far is that we're playing quite conservatively. I think it's good to always kind of just have a little review of what the what the team is going to be doing, what their techniques are like, and then you can start to be a little bit more flexible. Good rebound there from James McClelland, picking that up. Yeah, two rebounds early doors from McClelland. And again, that was something that was spoken about earlier in the England camp, is making sure we're going up for every single ball on the rebound, both attack and defence. So good to see them adopting that instruction early. Thompson Boston then at the top of the circle, quick to take the penalty. And I think Taylor. The, sorry, sorry, Lucy. No, go ahead. I think the tournament nerves have settled in a bit more now. You know, mm. I think um, the last few games we've seen people kind of come on, they've been really excited, and obviously, obviously, which it is, it's a lovely occasion to play in. But all the lads look like they've got proper game faces on today. I don't know if you you, you agree with that, or yeah. they all look really focused. I, I would agree, and I think that sort of contributes to how how and why they've started in such a controlled measured manner it definitely seems possibly a little less high energy but that's not necessarily a bad thing yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> see what i mean when we're talking yeah. about elevation <laughs> from some of these caribbean teams that yeah. is exactly what we are talking about their hang time is phenomenal they seem to just be up in the air until the like the ball comes up and, and they can rest back down again a strong three over there on the first phase yeah. of the centre pass. Lovely interception. But that is testament to the pressure that was put out the front by Thompson, Boston and Bleakley. Just allowed McClellan 
to yeah. come and snap all that ball. You know, one of the things we did, we've spoken about off, off camera and away from the commentary is, you know, these, these players who kind of do an absolutely solid job and may not be the most flary of players or showy of players, but they create such an opportunity for the people behind them or in front that, you know, it, it still deserves a lot of recognition. Um, I think Jared's one of those players. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, like you've just said, it was that pressure with putting those putting an increased pressure on the pass coming in and that's allowed James to kind of monopolise on that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So England then with the penalty, you can see Firminger protecting his space. Mm. That was Ooh. a fantastic hold. Fantastic hold. Because like you say, these guys are big. I think if they want to move you off your spot, they can move you off your spot, but he held his space so well then. I think the goal attack as well for Granada, he's one that we spotted yesterday, he's definitely one to watch for this team. A yes. really has great court craft, a really strong playmaker for the side. And oh. again, pressure applied um, to create a backline opportunity for us. Good give and go from McClellan. And that was nice, they went straight down the line, then centralised the ball. Although you do have three players all in the same little bit in that passage. Joel Taylor as well is, is holding so well against these players, creating so much space. I feel like the ball could have gone in a bit earlier, if I'm honest, uh, to Joel there. Um, but that, you know, they've kept hold of it and they've been disciplined, so that's fine. I think discipline is the word of the day for me. Must have read it on the toilet paper yeah. or something. <laughs> well, let's see if that carries through for the rest yeah, I was of the game. Say, <laughs> I feel like I Might need to not say thing. it one more time. <laughs> Robin it then for England. Oxford gets called for the obstruction. It finds its way to Firminger. Oh, oh I thought it was going to get away with that then. Yeah, ever so slightly late call there. But Good recovery, Joel. Oh. Yeah, just coming through the back of him was Peters. Firminger then to deliver, and he does just that for England. And he mopped that right up, didn't he, he Lucy? He popped up and he mopped up. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my, yeah. one of my best lines from yesterday. <laughs> so Wilson then for Grenada. Oh, just forcing that ball in. That was never on, really. Great tip though from Jamal again, you know, reading where uh, James was going to be. So rather than risking a contact call, just tipping that ball over nice and clean. Lovely open up into court. Ooh, a bit of a footwork, was yeah. that a late takeoff potentially? Or maybe a bit of a drag, I'm not too sure. So Wilson then for Granada having to go back to Oxford, They're looking for options. Oxford to steal into Baptiste. Looking for the offload, he's going to back himself. Oh, what a beauty! That was a lovely shot, actually. Although I have to say, this goal shooter yesterday did nothing but jump shots. Ah, so he got true. right under the post and he jumped right up. And actually, I think a couple of times he was looking down into the net because yeah. he jumped so high. <laughs> um, but I've not seen him try one jump shot so far. Um, so that's. Do you think that's, that's because of the defensive position in England? Absolutely, absolutely. They're not letting him get into that the spot that he clearly likes to shoot from, although he, he did just make a really lovely shot from a bit further out. Strong defensive pressure here for England. Oh, so nearly. Oh. There it is. But lovely, can't get Jamal. two hands to it. Lots of communication going on. She's yeah, good. interesting choice to have the wing attack take that penalty so high up the court. I would have let the defence take that personally. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky, Jamal Nicholson. Yeah. Oh, but there you go. There we go. There's the netball gods <laughs> coming into play there. Oh! Ooh. Yeah, trying the bullet oh, yeah. pass. It's a nice idea, but didn't have that eye contact first before offloading. Lovely draw from Taylor that opens up Firminger on the goal line. And oh my goodness, the tip on the shot. 
They are so pleasing to watch. Oh my goodness, oh, the they hoist! It, yeah. <laughs> the Harrison hoist, we saw one! <laughs> Actually, we've seen quite a few yeah. I don't think we've had any in our games. No, before. I don't think we've seen any in our games. And I have to say, at first, I didn't know if that was just somebody jumping. Yeah, honestly, I really They've did. got such a good elevation, but yeah, it was it was one of the defenders lifting the other defender. And again. So another turnover for England then. Back into the centre third, so Bleakley to take the penalty. Thompson, Boston, Firmager in the pocket. Lovely release into Taylor and the goal. And the goal. There yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a lovely passage of play, that. And I think that left all the I think the test now is to make sure that we maintain this. Um, you know, when, when we're looking at netball games, a lot of the time it's consistency that pays off. So obviously, if we continue with this, oh, no fear there, no fear putting that ball up, which is lovely. Well done, James. So 12 goals to one currently in favour of England. So just a solitary goal for Granada, but we have seen some really nice passages of play from them already. This is better from them, not forcing it in. They're working their way to they've circle edge. The they put the pressure on. Oh, McClellan just adopting that front position. <laughs> Jimmy's a clever player there, isn't he? Isn't he just, just highlighting a thing to the umpire sometimes that they do, you know, they dive in prematurely and it's not always noticed. And I think sometimes, you know, when the advantage call comes, it's not always an advantage because of because of the kind of delay in, in the um, obstruction. Um, but I have to say, the umpires have been pretty good with that so far, with the help of Jimmy. <laughs> Just being helpful, umpire. Yeah. yeah. Firminger. Oh, the hoist again, my goodness. I think we're going to need to start blocking these defenders out, I think, to help yeah. each other in the circle. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's a lovely ball in. Couldn't quite keep control of it, though. Right now we're witnessing team Neda versus team Yuki. You can hear Sharon Lewis Burke shouting two hands on the ball. None of this one handed tomfoolery. Oh, good defensive pressure from Granada. I'd like to have just seen the keeper fly on that one just outside the circle. Yeah, I think we're going to have to see some uh, a bit of a change up in, in the circle there because I think the defenders have clearly adapted their play to what we've been doing, um, which is really clever. Um, but obviously we now need to be able to adapt to how they're defending us. So for me, again, I think I'd, um, I'd step in front and you know yeah. make sure that the person who was shooting, if I was the goal attacker or the goal shooter, I, I'd try and step in front of the defender to stop them from getting in their way. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see who in that shooting circle kind of takes on that leadership and directs the yeah. other to do yeah. just that. We see in practice, change? I've seen both Joel and James F um, doing that, so I'm pretty mm. sure one of them will pick it up really quickly. So a couple of changes for Grenada. So in that goal attack position and the wing defence position. Unfortunately, we don't have any information other than the starting seven for any of our opposing nations. So apologies for not being able to share any sort of insight or analysis on the opposing teams. Just chasing after the ball. So look, look at that setup, those two distinct lines. So you see oh, yeah. that box and it's just shifting. Moving together, lots of talking, and, and again. There you go, right on cue. Exactly, yeah. That's probably the most distinctive setup that I've seen from England so far, but a little bit wayward, well kept in by Nicholson. Thompson Boston to Taylor out the circle. Lovely drive. Oh, that was so good from Firminger. So about 90 seconds left on the clock approximately. So our clock isn't the official timekeeping clock. So apologies if we are a few seconds above or below the actual time. This course has gone so quick though. Hasn't it just? It really has, yeah. 
Oh, unlucky for Baptiste. It rang yeah. all the way around the rim and just popped out. He did his best to try and pass it off, though. He clearly feels more comfortable shooting from a little bit closer in. Well, like you say, we haven't seen the jump shot from him so far in this game, so no. I think that's indicative of how the defence are uh, pushing him outside of his comfort zone, keeping him high. There you go, we've just seen James F blocking that defender out from Joel, allowing him to shoot, and then picking up the rebound, which is fantastic to see. Yeah, really well identified, really smart from the youngster. Oof! Lee very delicately picked that ball up then, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> is this mine? I think it is, Lee. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So into Lingen then on the sideline, big ball over to the centre third in Nicholson. Thompson Boston now to Taylor on one foot. Firminger mid range. He is being made to shoot from further of a field. I'd like to see him go in for his own rebounds. That's the one thing that I will critique. Absolutely. Interesting though, I think, because James is so confident in his shot. I don't think he, think he needs to follow, but <laughs> you know, with, the, with these posts, I think it's, it's good practice to get into, really. Yeah, the, um, I mean, we mentioned it on the stream oh, yesterday. Just saw a little bit of a late challenge there from James McClellan, so he's going to be out of the circle. So let's see how Jamal, Jamal deals with this. Oh, very close, almost, that's it. So McClellan all yes. over that, those rangy arms. There he gets the Just trick up as well. On the buzzer. Buzzer beater for defence there, I think. Yeah, there you go. They get a buzzer beater <laughs> of their own. Love that. And at the end of the first quarter, it's 16 to 1 in favour of the Thorns. We'll be back after a short break. I thought we'd have a little bit of a quicker, um, sorry, a closer game at this stage because, we, you know, obviously we spoke about watching the Grenada uh, team play yesterday um, and I think at most of the quarter time or the half time scores it's been fairly even. Even though we obviously hoped that we would be ahead, we didn't think there'd be such a gap. We thought there'd be more of kind of a crossroads of like a really close, you know, close set of uh, scores there. A bit of bone thugs and harmony there with crossroads. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be a little bit closer, but there's obviously this gap. So this is going to be interesting, I think, for each coach, because each coach's messages are going to be so different at this stage, aren't they? It would be interesting to see what Grenada do to come out and try and turn this around, because ultimately there are three more quarters to go. So, you know, if they then went on, had a really strong second quarter, they could absolutely narrow that, that gap. But then, like we said before, about wanting to keep this consistency and this control, are we going to see any changes? Are we going to try and keep it stable for the second quarter and then potentially bring people in? Because, you know, um, I wondered if maybe sometimes the changes yesterday caused a little bit of, of unsettle. Maybe not. You know, that, that's obviously just, just me trying to guess. But, yeah, I wonder if we won't see any changes now. And then as this quarter moves on or maybe going into the third quarter, we might see some other people come on. Yeah, it's interesting because I think we saw a high number of changes yesterday in that Antigua Barbuda game than we have seen previous from England so I do think that probably contributes to a little bit of disruption as well so I think you're absolutely right but an interesting 
something for me while you were talking I just looked up the score from the Jamaica Granada game and it was 20 Grenada and so I keep switching between Grenada and Granada I'm going to try and stick with Grenada it was 20 Grenada and 56 Jamaica and you know obviously first quarter they've only scored one so far and with Jamaica probably being the, the most similar in standards to England I just thought that was an interesting reflection to see how many Grenada scored against them to how many they're likely to score against us. And, and the same for us really, you know, how, how is it looking for us? I mean, mm. we obviously don't want to get ahead of ourselves at the end of the first quarter and we've been wrong with every single one of our guesses. <laughs> <laughs> I was close, I was very close. <laughs> you were very close. <laughs> I wasn't not close at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we're going to get on, obviously, as the game goes on, but a very, very strong start. And having a look at England for the second quarter then, I don't spot any changes, which for me with my coaching hat on, I, I really rate that. And I think with all the changes yesterday and the disruption that possibly came from them, I think it's a, a really great idea to just let this seven ride out for a little bit longer. Then you can look to rest the legs. Because obviously we do have, was it three, three games left after this? So bodies are going to start getting sore. Uh, but let's see how this seven can run out the second quarter. Do you know, I think um, an interesting point to make, I think, is, you know, because of the way that you described on the first night with it being self-funded, you know, this is a, a newish England team, you know, it's been going for a couple of years, but obviously it's changed within that time. They haven't got the luxury of what we have at club, club level, Absolutely. you know, where we get to see them every week and we get to try out different combinations and different levels of games. This is a specific set tournament, so you need, you want to get people on, you want to get fresh legs, you want to get different combinations because you want to see how they work together, but then you also want to provide stability, so I absolutely appreciate how difficult these decisions must be. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the last England Swan series that we had was the Jamaica Sun series last year. I, I believe and so from that series there's only three players who are actually in this squad today so when you say it's a fairly new England side you're absolutely correct yeah lovely goal going in there for James F and again just getting that lovely hold I actually think oh I think the goal defence uh, scored that one then <laughs> um, I absolutely think we could map out um, James F's foot where he likes to land in that circle he's got a real sweet spot Um and, you know, just thinking about the shooting percentages, really, um, over the last few days, I think, like, James has, has been fairly consistent and maintained his, you know, within a certain range, mm. um, which I think is fantastic. Um, it's hard to do in a different climate, um, but, yeah, he's, he's been really good with things like that. That's, That's what all. you need. Coach's yeah. dream. <laughs> Absolutely. We saw a lovely goal there oh, for England. Oh, oh. Strong take from Firminger. Taylor just pulled out of that drive. I think he was opting to go into that backspace that wasn't read by Firminger. Yeah, that actually would have been... He had a lovely bit of space into the circle there, but, yeah, I could absolutely see where the mix-up came from. Oh, yeah, the hell ball. Oh, that zone defense is just so effective. And you can hear Lee Robnett taking on that leadership role, saying, right, 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 left, left, left. That was a thing of beauty, that. It was. When you've got attackers who defend like that, what can you do? What can you do as the opposition? So breaking cord against Jared Bleakley. Granada with the opportunity, but McClelland again, he gets a hand in. Contact cord, though. Against Nicholson. I think against Nicholson, yeah. that one, yep. Yeah. And there's McClelland. Yet another intercept. I actually lost count of how many he's got so far in this game. I actually think James McClellan's had the ball more than the shooters. Yeah, I'm going to agree. The shooters. <laughs> good decision, Lee. I love a good reset. Very sensible play. This is good defence from Grenada. They're really making England work for it. You can see Thompson Boston. Possibly puffing a little bit. I think we might see a change in centre for the second half. I think we're seeing the connections between the players tonight. Although we've just obviously seen a little bit of an error, but you know, in the in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing. But the connection that we've seen in the players is what we saw in the USA game. It was just so fluid and natural, and it you know it it moved where you thought it was going to move and you know they were complete there was lots and lots of options they were constantly moving around each other for lots of support so it's really good to see that come back 
Really quick give and go from Nicholson. Oh, probably a little bit too much pepper on that parcel. Maybe needed two hands to it from Thompson Boston. Yeah. Grenada now having to go side to side. It's all lateral. There's a little bit of depth there. That's better. But Sheeta having to come all the way up to the transverse line. Lovely. Oh. And there's that jump shot from the goal attack. Unlucky though because uh, obviously Jimmy uh, James Thompson Boston got got two-handed um, tip there, but it just didn't get anywhere unfortunately. But still that pressure all the way through. Oh, that was a beautiful roll from Taylor, but the placement from Firminger a little bit askew. Yeah, a little bit squiffy as I like to say. Yeah, so British though. We always turn round. It's sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Again, good pressure, good pressure bringing this ball out. Oh, so, so close. close from Lee. Good patience here, they're still working it. Not able to do the jump shot. Oh, and there's and that three second ball. Goal. So just the one goal so far in this quarter for Grenada, matching their first quarter score. There's that very convincing fake from Jamal Nicholson there. Umpire just clear where we're setting the penalty. I'd like to have just seen a slightly tighter setup for the defender being out of play. Contact from James F there. I'm not sure I saw what happened there, but the umpire was right on top, so. It must have been very clear, maybe a little bit of an arm in the back or something, trying to get some space. A shooter with an arm in the back? We don't do such a thing, Taryn. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't think I do, but when I look back, I think, yes, absolutely guilty. Really just struggling to penetrate and get any kind of depth in this attack. They do find their way to Circle Edge. Like to see him back himself there. They like oh. to step in. That was really good from the umpire because that's a difficult thing, I think, to call. I think as well that it was the discipline from McClellan. The temptation to put your hand on that ball when they step in is so, so strong. But he kept himself nice and still, nice and strong, and forced the error. There's a little whoop from Lee. Classic. Just a quiet one, just I'm here if you need, but... But don't use me if you don't need me. <laughs> it's one of those famous netball phrases, isn't it? Here if you need. Here if you need. Both shooters out the circle for Grenada. So I, I feel oh. like at the moment they're just playing without any sort of particular structure. It feels like they're all playing yeah. as individuals for Grenada at the moment, whereas England are playing very much as a unit. Yes, definitely. I actually think Grenada look a little bit tired. Um, I think we saw a lot more kind of action from them yesterday and I wonder if that was just a particularly strenuous game. And like you say, being halfway through the tournament, is it starting to take its toll on some of the players? Oh, it looks like oh. we're going to get a hoist. Yeah. He very <laughs> cleverly positioned himself in front yeah. of it. I've clocked yeah. onto what we were saying. It's almost like I know what we're saying. Exactly, Karen. yeah, yeah. Almost. <laughs> almost, not quite. <laughs> I do think though, like they are making England work to get it into the circle. I mean, that that was a, a textbook one, two, three. <laughs> but uh, you know that previous passage. Yeah. yeah. They are making them work for it. Yeah. That was about two point one seconds, I think, getting mm. that in there. <laughs> classic, just as you say. <laughs> oh. Again, you can see arms over, arms over. Every different stage of um, you know defensive technique that you can do is in place and then again it's just paid off lots of pressure moving their feet you know blocking the passages coming on the right side of the players um, and it's just again resulted in another turnover oh right in yeah. the face a little bit of a falcon there yeah can feel that one tomorrow yeah <laughs> yeah so i didn't even then. flinch from that i think i would have been <laughs> I would have been going. They made a cutting onions in here. <laughs> so contact call, Firminger mid to long range. Oh, great positioning from Joel Taylor there. It's 
almost as if he knew where the ball was going to rebound. Oh, and that was a contact call. Yeah, I probably would have called it the other way myself. He went out two hands strong. Good he arms did. over from Bleakley. We haven't spoken much about Jared Bleakley, but he was, um, was it your one to watch or was it, it was Lou's one to watch? How do you think he's got on so far in this game? Really good. Again, you know, the setup has been perfect. It's been almost seamless and I think it's been one of them where we've seen so many defensive turnovers. There's no way that the wing defence has not, you know, has not um, kind of been part of all that pressure. Mm. Um, so, yeah, he's not coming out and doing wild players, but he's absolutely taken his wing attack out of this game. Yeah, I mean, we've said a number of times that, you know, Grenada have struggled to get themselves to circle edge. So Jimmy's just calling for a tactical change there, which we know will come after the next goal. Well, technically should come after the next goal, so... Yeah, probably um, shouldn't have asked for it at that point in time. It does have to come after a goal. So we'll see if Granada can sink this one. Ooh. They really like to step in. Oh, well done, McClellan and Nicholson. From Nicholson there, I should say. <laughs> A bit naive there from Fermager. Didn't sight the defence, only had eyes for Robnett. Just needs to open up his yeah. vision a little bit. Again, just a loose little pass. These things happen. Oh, oh that was so well kept in. I was always going to say that was due to the pressure of Robnett attacking the, the pass on the three-foot <laughs> mark, but did well to keep it in and another Falcon play on Still I think playing. she blew a whistle so we maybe should have stopped but oh good recovery a little no look pass very smart you could see that a hoist is being set up and there's the tactical so Harvey Lane coming on into centre I, I did suspect we might see I did suspect we might see that change Thompson Boston did look at a little bit out of breath at times. But he is such an engine for that midfield, isn't he? Is. So I think he, he, he deserves is. a rest. Yeah. He absolutely does. Given the heat and the humidity that we've got to deal with, I think it's an absolutely different different game here on the lungs, you know, so especially in centre court, especially in defensive centre court, you know, they're always back, they're provi you know, they're on the he's driving to circle edge. He doesn't just leave it to the wing attack. Yeah, I would have called that as replaying as well. Um, a little bit of Harlem Globetrotter action going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see a Harlem Globetrotter show this year. Good? Really, really good, yeah. Thank Although you. we got court passes as a gift and um, I think it was primarily for children. <laughs> You're young at heart, Aaron, so it's, I'm it's very all good. Yeah. Some might even describe me as childish. <laughs> so Harvey Lake collecting the ball has brought an England throw in. Oh, I think we've just got to put a little bit more on these balls at mm. the moment. They're just getting a little bit loose. Yeah, I think I the placement agree. sometimes is on the um, the player, uh, the defender side of the player. Yeah. So we just need to push that out a little bit more, or position ourselves in a little bit of a clearer angle. Oh, see that that was ju just a little bit soft. I think as well that ball probably could have done with a bullet pass into Fernandez yeah. on the goal line as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. I think Joel was expecting the pass to go to James F behind him, and so when it came back in, it was a bit, a bit of a different interaction, some changes there for Grenada again. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to put some fresh legs on, to rotate. I mean, the game is arguably beyond them now. It's 28 to two, so still only scored one so far in this quarter. And you, you want to give all the players experience of playing a team that is of a, you know, a different standard and a different style to you. Kept in by there, James McClelland. Sometimes that can pay off. Um, obviously it did then, but sometimes I'd worry that they were going to just jump and collect that. Yeah. So I think just a, a little bit of timing out there for Harvey Lake. Just need to drive that fraction earlier. Okay, that's one of the things he's been working on is identifying when he needs to drive and actually when he needs to allow his defence to bring it down to him. So I don't think he's quite perfected it just yet. 
but it's definitely something that he's working on. Yeah. So that was good. Two strong options to ball in late yeah, and firm definitely, and yeah. Lovely turn. Oh. <laughs> that was unfortunate. That was a good attempt, but yeah, then just try, went right? offside. Yeah, what a yeah. Crack. And it didn't actually look like some of the uncontrollable attempts that mm. we've seen in the tournament so far, where people just fall offside to get the ball. It was, I think, it was a genuine attempt to try and jump. So obstruction called against the goal defence for Grenada. They both looked a bit close to me there, but obviously. Oh. There you go. That's James F doing what he does really well is. His awareness of the other players in the circle is, is actually so good and so lovely to watch. I have to say though, I'm glad that Taylor took that shot and didn't offload to Firminger. It's really important that even when your percentage isn't what it needs to be, that you do keep putting oh, up those shots. Oh my Fantastic goodness! Shot. As you can hear, the crowd behind us are <laughs> shouting like, for Joel Taylor there. Joel's like, yeah, Lucy, stop talking about my shooting percentage. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, just going to show you how it's done. And Lou is sadly silent on the yeah. camera at the moment, but <laughs> wanting to yell. <laughs> right, Grenada then. Can they respond in kind with a long bomb of their own? No, they oh. are going to offload. Good decision. And yeah. there's that jump that shot. Jump shot. Taylor out, robbing it into the pocket. The way he's able to get himself on circle edge is just so impressive every exactly, single yeah. time. Oh, see, just Jared coming through there, just putting a bit more of a tip on that, putting pressure on that. <laughs> Sorry, Darren, to interrupt you. That was an absolute <laughs> beauty. I could not help but do a whoop of my own, yeah. a la Robin at Thompson Boston. I, I was just going to say, they scored like two goals. Um, in the, in the kind of the first, what, 15, maybe even 25 minutes, and then they've just scored two goals in the last two minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great observation. So it's 30 to England, 4 to Grenada going into the second half. So yeah, a couple, couple run of goals towards the end of that quarter, which is uh, really positive for them, but still quite the margin for them to overcome. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out, whether they decide to do any more rotations, rest any more legs. Oh, just a little bit of a drop of the camera. Apologies there for anyone watching. <laughs> Lou getting a bit too excited <laughs> with all of the action. Just going to tighten up the... There we go. Oh, no. Yeah, just going to tighten up the equipment a little bit. A couple of technical issues. So while we get the camera sorted, let's have a little chat about how the game has gone so far. So Taryn, what's your, what's your assessment of the fixture so far? Um, I mean, we've spoken a lot, you know, about how um, the passages of play have been lovely, you know, from end to end. Um, we seem to be having camera difficulties here, unfortunately. We'll just try and fix them quickly. But yeah, the passages of play have been lovely so far. Um, it's been really nice. We've had that, you know, kind of very clinical very clinical play you know where we've been kind of we've had our wing attack driving into pocket for second phase and then you know our shooters kind of um, either using a screen or moving themselves around um, and, and working in that kind of way so we're just sorry we're just trying to get this camera fixed at the moment so yeah so we've seen a lot of a lot of clinical netball playing and um, we've seen really strong defense all the way through like you know we, we got we had that um, defensive setup so strong before where it got even taken away in, from the attacking end um, from our attacking end I should say um, so yeah it's been absolutely fantastic so far um, from an England perspective yeah, I would completely agree. And we've uh, actually just dismantled the camera so we can give you a view from the bench, courtesy Ooh. of eminent president Alan Ryan. So I hope you're enjoying the close-ups of the players and seeing all of the discussions that are taking place. I hope you're able to lip read. Obviously, the microphones are up here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, people would rather see us as well. <laughs> is the money maker right yeah, here. That's right. <laughs> and Lou, I'm going to bring you back into the conversation. Obviously, you've been operating the camera so far. What do you make of Grenada's performance? You've spoken a bit about England. What do you think of Grenada so far? 
Yeah, I think they, they're still trying, which is a testament to them. You know, they, they haven't given up. Like um, Taryn said, they got those last two goals in quite quick succession, so it just shows that, you know, that can really give you a bit of a boost at the end of the half. Um, I just think the defence, obviously, for England are quite suffocating and they need to just try and do something different to come out of that. Um, but yeah, obviously a really tough game for them, but brilliant exposure to, to play against a team like England. So I think they just need to get their head back in the game and hopefully we'll see a few more goals and see what they can do to combat this defence of England. Yeah, I think there's so many um, so many lessons that can be learned from playing different sides like in England, even though the score isn't what they would have wanted it to be. But there's lots of little goals that they can set themselves. You know, what is our centre pass to goal conversion? Um, how are we looking for depth in the second phase? All those kind of things. What's our shooting percentage? How many intercepts are we able to get? So be interesting to see what goals or objectives they set themselves for this second half. And what do you think Sharon Lewis-Burke, the head coach for the Thorns, is going to be saying to the guys now, Taryn? I think she's going to be saying to kind of um, take things back to, to how it looked in the first quarter, you know, kind of get yourself settled back in. Um, I think we could actually see that creeping back in at the end of that quarter. I think there's times where we, it had gone a little bit loose, like we said, the passing had gone a little bit loose and we probably weren't... Um, kind of releasing the ball the way that we were, you know, with with a bit more power, and you know we were choosing our passes a, l you know, probably not in the best the best with the best decisions. Um, but as the end, as the quarter came to an end, we definitely saw that tighten up a bit. So it will probably be like we want that to come back in, and we want to see that consistent play. Um, I'm not sure if any changes will be made. Um, I don't know if. Um, Jimmy's going to be coming on at wing defence but he's certainly got a wing defence bib on um, but it'd be interesting I think now is the time to maybe put, put a couple of fresh legs on um, and give them the same goals give, maybe even give them the position some specific goals to work on um, because again like we say you know even though it's a tournament this is a this is always a time for learning so it's you know it's a time to get those individual goals in and say you know can you keep your you know if you're the wing defence can you keep your wing attack away from that goal D um, you know, can you stop them on first phase or second phase or can you leave them for two on first phase and then try and drive out for that centre pass interception? I think as well, if you take a look at the fixtures that are coming up for England, so tomorrow we face St Kitts and Nevis, the, the host nation, the day after St Vincent and the Grenadines, and then our final game is against Trinidad and Tobago, and that's probably what we're anticipating to be our, our second hardest game after Jamaica, so the ability to be able to practice certain structures now, put those, um, really get them into gameplay, into a live gameplay situation, and setting yourselves those targets and objectives to be able to then take that into future fixtures, so some of which are potentially going to be quite difficult as well. I think that's really valuable. And it is possibly a little bit neglectful of me at the start of the game, not to mention that Rowan Weaver is back in the squad today. Yes. He was out yesterday yeah. due to concussion protocols. And we saw Nigel Skyers, uh, who is a travelling reserve player coach, come into the squad. He got his first England cap yesterday as well. So congratulations, Nigel, a brilliant achievement. But with Rowan back in the squad, we did see him make his debut uh, the day before yesterday. He did take that heavy knock, which is why he was out due to concussion. But when he was on, he had a cracking game, didn't he? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Again, so strong in the air, strong, you know, holding against the players. We spoke about how tough these, uh, you know, all of these teams are. They're all very strong, all very athletic. Um, and so to be able to hold your space against those players and use your strength against them against them is is absolutely fantastic and as i mentioned we did see nigel skyers make his debut yesterday and i, I think he brings a lot of strength and communication to the team what did you make of his debut lou yeah i think he did a good job but considering he had to come in you know uh, quite quickly without probably that expectation to come in um he, he come on strong like you said really good communication from the back got a few tips away on looking for some of the calls i thought um, but it was good to have somebody else that we can see in there. He has been training, he has been part of the Thorns before, so um, they are familiar with his style of play and he's played with Jamal, I think, before and a couple of others. So it was great to see him out there. Yeah, congratulations, Nigel. Nigel, I think he was Thorn number 27 from memory. So that's seven debuts that we've had for England in this tournament. Now we just had a, a cheeky little switcheroo on the camera. So thank you very much, Taryn Moss, for your commentary services. And I'm delighted to welcome Lou Granger back on the mic. Thank you very much. I have been, uh, yeah, been watching closely. It's hard to, uh, to not speak when you're on the camera <laughs> and not shout as well um, at the players. 
top supporters over here. Nice rebound there from the goal shooter and another jump shot. I know Taran was talking about that earlier um, and he's, he's brought that jump shot back in and it's really hard to defend that. So uh, he's done a good job there. So another goal on the board. So we do have a change for England as well. I have to say I'm quite surprised to see Thompson Boston come on into wing defence. I, I would have expected that he would sit out for the rest of the game just to rest the legs, if nothing else. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, a I'm lunge quite there, sure I'm not sure. Um, I, think, I think with, with Jimmy out, um, you just lose that bit of leadership through the middle, which um, a, lot, a lot of the players rely so heavily on um, and is such an integral part of this team. Um, it's, it's good to see what they can do without him in there, you know. Um, but I think bringing him back on just to give that bit of structure through the middle of the court. It's quite, quite a young... You've got Harvey Lake, you've got Lee Robnett, both quite young players. Um, new to the Thorns, you know, both David Johnson in this competition. So, oh, unlucky there for James. And another jump shot. That's uh, undefendable, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think he'll probably just offer a bit of structure there in the middle. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Dan Lewis be given a run mm. out at wing defence. I mean, we might see it later on in the game, perhaps. Oh, yeah, McClellan, how did he get a fingertip to that? He has just been all over this court, hasn't he? I have to say, he's putting his hand up for MVP two days in a row. Mm. Yeah, he's doing a great job. He's, he reads the play so well, I think. He's coming out at the right time, staying back at the right time, but... We are seeing a bit of a mix-up in that shooting circle now, so we'll see what what Maka does to combat that. Oh, what a shot. I have to I say, I think this Grenada team has really come out with some fire and some mm. intensity in this third quarter as well. Yeah, I wonder what their, their half-time talk was. It would have been interesting to have a listen in. Probably, probably quite fired up. Nothing to lose. They've got to go for it. Yeah, that was a, a heavy hit against Harvey Lake, but the penalty actually against the wing... Oh, no, it is against the centre. Yeah, he's straight up, Harvey, though. Straight back into it. Yeah, I'm glad that was called by the umpire. Harvey's actually only been playing netball, well, it's less than two years. Oh, bless him. Yeah, <laughs> so I think like to be playing at this level of competition when you haven't been playing netball for two years yet is an absolutely incredible achievement. So, you know, congratulations to him and just getting that exposure. Oh, oh a bit of a roar from the centre. I wasn't happy with that, but... Um, yeah, Jimmy's straight on that there. Straight down that court as well, down the centre channel. Oh, but just not able to finish it off. I'd like to have seen Firminger at least attempt to go mm. up for the rebound then. He was right by the post. I think the, the um, offensive rebounds is definitely mm, uh, a work, work on area for England. Absolutely. Oh, oh. the spin there from the goal attack. He was missed, but that was good movement from him. Oh, what a shot. Yeah, nice goal for Granada. Even under that pressure of James McKellen there. So that's seven goals, so that's three already in mm. this quarter. So they really have started with oodles of enthusiasm. Robnett then for England. Oh, I just didn't want to give the drive to Lake going into the pocket. Lake just needs to make sure he stays upright at times. He is getting quite a few mm. hits. I think they have been quite physical, actually. Mm. Um, watching some of the games before, it, they have been probably more physical than England are used to, I would say. Yeah, I think I'd probably agree. And we've got a tactical substitution, so... Oh, oh McCartney Oliphant coming on into centre. Okay, this will be interesting to see. He's a very versatile player, Ross. He, he plays all over the court. So I haven't seen this, though. I've, I've never seen Ross at centre, so... This will be interesting to see what he can do here. No, I've seen him at goal shooter, goal attack, wing attack, even in defence. Yeah, I've seen, seen him in defence. No, yeah. I have not seen yeah, him in. Yeah, I've seen him in goal defence actually. So let's see what he can do at centre. Through that middle of the ball. I think I think Harvey was struggling a little bit, yeah. maybe with the physicality or just, just with the timing a little bit. So let's see what Ross can do. Oh, held from James Firminger. Oh, and Ross gets the ball on the edge of the circle. Oh, Lee just settles the ball there, which is good. Nice take. Yeah, it's important oh. to remember you don't always have to give that first second ball, but yeah. there's a bit of a naive feed there, the placement not quite right. Yeah, I think Lee, Lee Robnett is actually very good at just steadying the play and yeah. holding it for an extra half a second. Um, a couple of times he has missed either Joel or James on the baseline with a, with a spin or a roll, but as the ball carrier, it's his decision, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
be keen to see how long this lineup is given to, mm. to settle because I would say it's a, not not quite there yet. I think they need a bit longer to get into the game. So it'd be interesting to see whether they're allowed that time or whether any other changes are made. The elevation, I can't that stop was a talking lift. about it. I think oh, that was a lift, a lift. Okay. yeah. All right, all right, I'll let them off. But I mean, I think you've already talked about it with Taryn. England need to recognise that lift now, and yeah. you've already said they had started to stand in front and block that out, but they've they've gone back to oh that's a nice ball there for a thread in the needle. Um, they've gone back to sort of not doing that, so it'd be nice to see them working together as a unit in that goal circle, just to give the other one a bit of confidence on the shot because you know it's, if you're putting your shot up and it's getting tipped, it's it's disheartening. Oh, stuck there, the goal attack. Lucky not to get a three seconds. Yeah. Really siphoning defence from England. Oh, and they come up with it. So really using the full width of the court here, England. I'm not sure if, if the timing's out a little bit in the attack end or if the ball's not being given. What do you think? I, I, I don't quite know. I think I need to see more of it. Mm. But yeah, I, I, there's something I can't quite put my finger yeah. on. Is to, what's it not quite clicking yet? The keeper or the goal defence is just getting a hand to it and it is quite clean. So I think they just need to adjust their timing. See another hoist there, they come up with it. Oh, Jimmy Thompson Boston comes up for an intercept there. Yeah, that was Oh, that that's was contact. Stunning. I would have called contact, but I'm not an umpire. <laughs> Wild well, commentator there. extraordinaire though. Yeah. So. <laughs> Umpire next to <laughs> So Thompson Boston then to McCartney Oliver. Oh Robnett. Bit of contact on circle edge. There's Ferminger, he'll work his way in, still probably further out than he would like. There's oh, a good there offload, go. good decision making. Yeah, much better from the goal shooter, goal attack combo down there, just recognising that Joel was in a much better position. And actually, oh, I, here we go. I was literally about to say, I think we might see a change mm. in the shooting position. I'm not just making that up, I promise. <laughs> and, uh, Rowan Weaver has come on for cap number two for England. Yeah, great to see him back. He's um, passed all his checks. He's safe to come on. So, oh, quick ball from Ross there. Didn't quite come off. Yeah, didn't turn fully before he released mm. to assess the options. Back on defence, though, England straight away. There's that zone oh. again. Oh, Robin, it almost. <laughs> oh, and they're through the zone now, so they need to decide now to go back to man on it. Um, wayward ball off the back there. McClellan <laughs> there to Nicholson, McCartney Oliver, and straight down the line to Ferminger. Back to Nicholson. Using all three channels of the court. They are struggling to get it directly to goal, though. This continued work rate in this heat and humidity mm. is just going to become exhausting after a while. Good to see that patience, though, I think, from England, because it is mm. tempting just to Launch sort it. of lob it in, yeah. Yeet. Yeah, but practising, going back, resetting the ball, setting up your structures again is really good for them. Nice clear from Rowan Weaver there to bring his keeper out with him. Yeah, I was going to say, looks a, looked a little close there. Oh. Quick shooter to shoot a ball. And Rowan gets his first goal of the game. And that's goal number 35 now for England. So Granada haven't scored a goal since those that little runner goals in the opening mm. few minutes. Both Came out firing, didn't they? Mm. Oh, nice. Oh, Jamal Nicholson again. Oh. Oh, unlucky, it's just a mishmash of bodies. That was footwork for my liking. Yeah, definitely. There, there you go, go. It's, gone off the, it's gone off the back line there. So yeah, footwork missed by the umpire, but England with the ball. Oh, he's lucky to release that ball before he land, landed yeah. then. It would have been a footwork again. So let's see what the timing's like for England here in this attacking third. Even there, you've got Jimmy directing, mm. you know, where he wants the players to go. He can see the space. He wants the players to get into it, directing Ross onto the circle edge to get that feed straight into the shooters. Oh, oh that was an intense shot, surely. <laughs> Lucky that's not advanced for Granada. Yeah, I agree, Lucy, actually, because that was definitely intentional. Made no attempt to get his distance there at all. Oh, oh just got there. A contact call against Weaver, I can't say I agree with that one. Yeah. Um, interesting call there. 
but we play to the whistle, it's a good lesson in discipline. Oh, the centre, Wilson for Grenada. Bit of frustration. Oh, <laughs> oh, McLennan not ready for that one. Jamal taking it extremely quickly. He's having a little laugh though, James. He's okay. Just, hey, um... That's the fourth Falcon we've had in this game. <laughs> oh, very short on the shot there. That was unusual. Yeah, Rowan just needs to take his time on that. Maybe getting a bit put off by the by the jump or by the defence. Out in front. To me, it looked like a bit of a sweaty mm. hand release. So it has been a bit of a problem. Oh, Jamal Nicholson coming. He read that so well. Stole that out of the air. Just that flat ball. Great when you get one of those. Oh, lovely pass from Rowan Weaver there. Straight shooter to shooter. And James Firminger with the goal. 36 to 7 then for England. Starting to, I feel like they're starting to get into it now. They are starting to find their rhythm. With the new combination, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Mm. Again, I would argue another intentional. Mm. There's no way it was ever cleanly going to get that ball. Yeah, I think so. And the trouble is with, with things like this, when they are intentional, it really, it stilts the play of the other team. Yeah. So yeah. then if you've set something up, oh, lovely ball again from Rowan. If you've set something up and that intentional arm comes in, that's gone then and you have to reset that up and they've yeah. done all the hard work, they need to do it again. And I think that needs to be called. The umpires need to recognize that because actually it's stopping that, that play that's already been set. Great change of direction from the goal attack, but can't quite get it to. Yeah, it was a good pick up out. for England. Well held by Fernandez. Yeah, tiptoes. And a good decision there from McCartney Oliphant. Mm. Well Must waited. say, Ross's feeds into the circle this tournament have been absolutely unreal. Yeah, His that, vision. There have been a couple where he's trying to thread the needle. Yeah. Hasn't quite been on, but some of them have been just oh. spectacular. As was that goal. Clap from the coaches on the bench there, the England coaches. <gasps> oh, oh, bit of argy bargy, ring attack and ring defence. Not happy with the physicality. Yeah. Oh, oh, again, another, another win for England. Yeah, they're really hitting their stride now. Look at that. Oh. Bish bash bosh down into oh. the goal circle. Oh. Lucky to get away with not a replay there, but couldn't quite finish that one off. I feel like I jinxed that one. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> They'll blame you later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice ball into the space. Nice shot. Nice finish there. I do wonder as well whether now we, well, shortly we might see a change in the defensive end as well. Nicholson looks a little bit gassed. Mm. McClellan, hands on his knees. Yeah, it's important to remember as well, they've still got, is it three more games? Three more games, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you've got, to, you've got to manage these players so that they are available for the rest of the tournament too. And I think as well, you've got the fresh legs of Alu and yeah. Lewis on the bench mm. who both play defensive positions. Yeah. Jared Bleakley did, what, just under a half, mm. so he could probably come on. Yeah, I think there's options. Lovely entry into the top of the circle from the goal attack and a little, a little dish off to the shooter and, and another jump shot we see from him. Yeah, and I feel like normally Nicholson would have been all over that little shooter to shooter ball. Yeah, maybe it is time for a bit of a change, a bit of uh, fresh legs just to keep it, keep them guessing, keep it going in the... Oh, oh, oh is that jump shot? Lay up. <laughs> oh, the ever-reliable Robnet steadies it again. Yeah, it's a nice transition for England. Just need to reward it now there we go well done James Ferminger James Ferminger's played a lot of minutes throughout this tournament so far as well so I mean he doesn't look tired no, <laughs> he's, he's a youngster <laughs> I have to say though I think his fitness is something that's really improved mm. over the last 12 to 18 months or so absolutely and especially out in goal attack I think mm. he's started please correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure his mum will let me know if I'm wrong because she's no <laughs> doubt watching this but I think he started more in goal shooter so he's developed his goal attack game yeah I think so oh. when I first saw him come on the scene he was playing goal shooter but quite interchangeable in those two positions mm. now and I, I, quite a lot of these players are actually yeah very much so both shooters out the circle again oh, oh very lucky there Lovely quick hands though. I do think we are seeing that though. Like the ball is being forced when actually it's not the best decision to make every time. Like yeah. very lucky with that one. Oh, 
a bit late there, Jamal. Apologises. Oh, that's unlucky. Jump, maybe a bit of jumping in. I'm quite time sure what, in there, maybe. Yeah, Just, I don't know um, what that one was. He's got a penalty though. It's after the whistle, so he'll take it. Uh, umpire's oh, been both, very both clear. players out, I think. Yeah. So, a bit of shooting practice for the goal shooter there. He gets it in, makes no mistake. So, another goal on the board for them. Yeah. So, 11 for Grenada, 40 for England. So they've hit that the big 4-0. Life begins at 40, right? That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll be back in a couple of minutes then for the fourth and final quarter between England and Grenada. So we are shortly going to be underway with the fourth quarter of game four of the America's Netball Men's Netball Championship. Lou, can you spy any potential changes for the England bench going into this last quarter? Yeah, it looks like we've got a few bib swaps here. We've got Ty Waralu with the goalkeeper bib on, which we were talking about before, Lucy, and maybe needing a little bit of a switch up in there. So I just saw coach Sharon lewis Burke just having um, a word with him away from the group. So um, we'll see... Oh, what's going on here? Um, so, yeah, I can't see any other changes. I'm, oh, maybe James McKelland with the wing defence bib on. Oh, um, yeah. So that's a poss possibility. Not Sitting down, though, not not stood up yet. Um, got a little bit of time, though. He's catching so. his breath, Lee. Yeah, yeah, give, yeah, him, yeah, a give him a second. <laughs> give him a These athletes, you know, come on. <laughs> but no, um, I, I think that's a really smart change to bring Taiwo Alu mm. on. I do think it was the right decision to start with the defensive lineup that we had. I think Taiwo didn't quite meet uh, expectations of him for yesterday's game. So I think just giving him the opportunity to observe the game from the bench, see how things are playing out, and then to really come in and hopefully make an impact in this last quarter. Yeah, and sometimes it's good to do that, I think. Just, just take a rest, have a look see what impact you think you can make. Study your player, see what they're doing and see what you can do to sort of come up against them and do something different. So yeah, he's coming on to court now. So yeah, we've got Ty Wolu in goalkeeper. Jamal Nicholson is still in goal defence. James McKinnon has gone to wing defence. Can we see a centre? Probably need a centre. Uh, yeah, so Harvey Lake's come on into centre. Harvey Lake's come on into centre. McCartney Oliphant's moved out to wing attack. Okay. And then Firminger and Weaver remain. So it looks like Firminger might be getting the full 60 minutes yeah, again. I know. He's, he has um, played some full games. Yeah. Must be doing some good recovery. Absolutely. <laughs> All that pool work Paul that Jack McDonald's has given him. <laughs> and I know they've got the, uh, the boots in the England camp as well to sort of um, get the recovery boots going, keep those legs moving. So maybe he's been on those. Yeah, nutrition as well, really key part of it, being able to fuel your body and replenish everything that you've lost because the the amount that you do lose <laughs> playing yeah, this game in terms absolutely. of salts, minerals, vitamins, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, really important just to keep hydrated, keep refreshed, which I'm sure Jack is making them do. And I'm really pleased that we've seen Harvey Lake come back on to centre. I did see Sharon lewis Burke having a little word of him, so he's had the opportunity to watch the game to be given some direct instruction, so let's see him put it into action now. Oh, the goalkeeper's just falling offside there. Tried to keep himself onside, but did a press up into the into the centre third. 
just wanted to show off his muscles. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Gym time. I was quite impressed, to be fair. <laughs> oh, Vision. what a ball. Wow. That's what I was talking about earlier from Ross. Yeah. Just sees that ball, threads the needle, and yeah, incredible. He's really harnessing mm. that ability, isn't he? He's getting stronger and stronger every game. Oh, that's short. Oh. Was it a bit of a replay? No, yeah, a little bit of a fumble yeah. of the ball there, but Alu just needs to lift that ball. He's got to remember these guys can jump. Nice drive there from Harvey. That's better timing from him, I think. Yeah, I would agree. But... Oh, there was not, not many options, to be honest, for Taiwo Alu there, so just sort of had to throw it into the space. Oh, he gets the turnover again, but he needs to land that. He had time, he had time to ground that ball and just take an extra second just to um, offload it to one of his teammates, but... Oh, goal shoes is just taking out the umpire. Oh, she doesn't oh. look comfortable. In fact, we might, the reserve umpire's just stood up oh, and sat back down, so I'm not sure if we'll be seeing him. It's look a bit uncomfortable on the sideline there. Oh, oh yeah, she's not able to run. Yeah, I think we are going to oh. see a change here. I'd like to see a whole time, though. <laughs> so, McCartney Oliphant then. Obstruction called against him. Nice, quick release nice into Weaver. Oh, oh, beautiful. What a shot. That was a chef's kiss. Yeah, it was. Right that was nice and high. That's what they need on these bouncy posts. Nice and high, dropped straight through the middle. James Femmeter was offering, but Rowan, really confident to take that shot. Great hold from Rowan there as well. And another fantastic shot, nice and high. He's got that lovely shooting action. Hopefully he can keep that up. And actually, I don't think the defensive identified yet that he likes to take that step in on the shot. Mm, yeah. So they, they could put him under even more pressure mm. once they identify that. Really tight one-on-one -on -one oh. defensive for England. Shooter comes out the circle to release. That's got to be close to three seconds, Lucy, that ball there. It was flirting with it, <laughs> flirting with it. Oh. Ooh. I thought that was going to be a, a goal shooter contact there, but I think she's called goalkeeper Taiwo out. Oh, a nice rebound from Taiwo Alu. Got that front Jamal position. Nicholson. Oh, was it Jamal? <laughs> Sorry. It's hard to tell. We are down the complete down the other end. The court, yeah. And the light is starting to fade a little bit now. Of course, because Taiwo was out, wasn't he? So, Grenada now in attack. Good elevation from the goal attack. Oh. James McKinnon covered that twice, that pass. I do feel like Grenady could maybe look to utilise some no-look passes. I think sometimes they're signposting where they want that ball to go and it's, yeah. it's quite easy for the Indian defence to pick yes, it off. Yes, that is true, actually. Maybe something they could add into their game, definitely. That's a lovely second phase. Oh. Oh. What was called there? Oh, contact. Contact against Weaver. Unlucky for Rowan. I thought he was quite clean there. Just hear the England bench bark in their instructions. They want, they want to see some really clean stuff from England, I think, and what they've been practicing. So, really barking the orders. Let's see yeah. if they're listening to. I think in that particular saying. passage, I don't think they were doing either a man on mm. or a zonal defence. There's a little bit of no man's land, particularly from Weaver. So just need to identify what the structure is on the turnover. Yeah, and I think if they are doing the box, that needs to be called early from the goal shooter uh, because everyone needs to be in there, otherwise it just doesn't work. Oh, oh the just Jamaica got a stray Jamaica player <laughs> onto the court. <laughs> just retrieving the ball from the other game. Yeah, that was a good win there for Taiwo Alou. Oh. Oh, a late challenger. And the umpire's just calling over the goal defence because that was quite dangerous, coming quite late. And she's given him a straight warning for dangerous play. Yeah, but it was uh, in the air as well. Yeah, and that is quite dangerous, to be honest. So the goal defence is out of play, two on one in the circle. Oh, that's intentional as well. That's got to be called. That he's right next to him, hands on the ball. There's nothing Harvey could do about that. But luckily, the umpire did call it. But like you were saying earlier, Lucy, I think that needs to be cleaned up. The umpires need to recognise that they are doing that. 
potentially on purpose. And I do think as well, we've spoken about the different stages of development for players, but that's also true for umpires yeah. out here as well. So yeah, true. We do have a lot of uh, international assessors here at this competition who are providing feedback every single game to the umpires, which is fantastic to see and is only going to strengthen the sport in the Caribbean for years to yeah, come. Yeah, absolutely. So Harvey Lake just caught on the penalty. Granada keeping it short and sharp. Oh, but that one's oh. too lofty, too lofty. Harvey just trying to make amends there for that penalty. He gets the turnover, which is great. Oh, look at the give and go. Oh. Yep. It's all over the court, Harvey Lake. Yeah, good work from the all youngster. Literally. All three channels, nice pass, pass from Ross, but doesn't quite come off again. Yeah. I think now the tiredness is setting in as well. Maybe just needs to settle that. I think Land as well, like, there's a couple of loose hands from Weaver. I do mm. think that's a possible work on point for him. Oh, oh but well read, Firminger. Uh -huh. Disappointed that they didn't quite pull that in, but that was well read. And just looking at the England bench, it looks like Dan Lewis is going to come on into wing defence. So McClellan is going to get a well-deserved rest. Alou then to Nicholson. Again, not enough on that ball. We've seen that. I think Tarion was saying it earlier. Or, or was it you, potentially? Just needs to put some more mm. oomph on this, some of these passes. Yeah. And then I think yeah, we were discussing if it was the timing that was slightly out or mm. if it was the pass. So it could be a bit of a combination there. Yeah, we've got that swap. Oh, we've got that swap. Yeah, Dan's come in. Oh, no, wing. McClellan's not getting a rest. He's going to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no rest for the wicked, eh? <laughs> So Dan Lewis coming on wing defence and McKennan's going into goal defence. So again, we're seeing James McKennan play all those three positions in defence again. Yep, saw that yesterday. Yeah. But it just shows how versatile he is and actually what an asset he is to this team. Absolutely. I think he's, he's good through court, isn't he, as well? And I think he'll be a good settler through court too. Always on the back up. Good timing on the pop from Firminger. Should be able to sink this one. Oh. Oh. A voice again. Let's see what England can do here. Nice take from James Berninger. Oh, Rowan did come in to set that screen so they couldn't do the hoist there. Oh, a bit oh. slippery. Gets away with that one. Yeah, he's using the ball well, Ross, there, just to um, get rid of his player from in front of him. Let the ball do the work, as they say. Absolutely. Nice into ball the into the pocket to oh. Lake. There's that give and go, that sweep of the circle from Weaver. A little bit of obstruction. Goal defence not happy with himself. Yeah, just went up on the shot there, but a little bit close. Oh, players ready, umpire not maybe. Just waiting for the whistle. Grenada, centre pass then. Wing attack takes a little bit of a tumble, but he's back on his feet. There he is, ball in hand. Oh, just didn't oh, know. Oh, yes, Dan Lewis. Oh. Which way has that gone? Has that gone Dan, in Dan's favour? Oh, I don't think it has. No, I think that's a grenade ball. Oh, that's a shame. I thought he was quite clean there. Yeah, a little bit hard done by. Yeah. Oh, so oh. a warning now been given to a I, I can't say I understand what that's for. I don't really know for. what that's for. Yeah, it's... it's down that other end of the court, we can't really hear what's going on. So I'm not sure. I didn't really see anything either. Yeah, it was a bit short on that one. Yeah. And again, that lovely jump shot. Yeah, actually jumped over the arms of James yeah. McKinnon, which is pretty impressive, actually. That's insane. <laughs> Weaver in that stronghold, asking for the ball. Oh, just needs a bit more on that, needs a bit more on that. If that hold is on, it just needs to be put into that back space rather than to where his hand is. Firminger going for a bit of a longer range shot here. Obstruction yeah. called again. Was definitely nice. Obstruction. Rowan's blocking out that goalkeeper. Yeah, lovely. That was really nice from Rowan Weaver just to um, let James settle on that shot. You've got to protect each other out there, haven't you? Do. You? you do. I like it when my goal attack or goal shooter does that for me. So roughly five and a half minutes left then in this quarter. It's 46 to 14 to the England Thorns. So another dominant performance from them and right on cue. There's a pickup from McClelland. I'd love to see his stat sheet after this mm, game. Yeah. Not quite as many goals for England today as we've seen yesterday or the day before. 
Oh my god, that is outstanding. Oh, outstanding work from Rowan Weaver. That spin, twist, hop, and Ross recognised that. Knew not to give the first ball. Spun round, gave that second ball. I applaud you, Rowan Weaver. Take a bow, my friend. <laughs> Take, Take a, a bow. bow. Unbelievable. That connection, though, between those two is fantastic. I also think with McCartney Oliver out the front, like, mm. it's, it's really, they're complementing each other beautifully. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Ross going into Rowan is, mm. yeah, oh, really apologies. nice. Yeah, no. yeah, Ross playing really well tonight in that wing attack position. Yeah, nice little cameo in centre. We'll see if we yeah. see that anymore <laughs> throughout the tournament. But just a slight oh. miscommunication. Oh, oh, that's really unlucky. A bit slippy on the ball there, I think. It was in acres of space, sometimes too long, too long to uh, make a decision of what to do with it. Good strength from Weaver. I had the keeper literally on top of him. Oh. So is that obstruction or is that kind of downward no. trajectory? I think that was actually interference with the ball because it was on its downward trajectory. Oh, oh he's off the team and suspended. He did get a warning earlier. He did, yep. Correct. So, yep, I mean, good from the umpire. He's got, he'll be out for two minutes, I think, and there's three minutes. Well, it's actually uh, just under yeah, four and a half oh, four, minutes four left on the clock officially. We are operating our own clock, so it isn't quite on, on the same amount as the official clock. We've got a yeah. one-man band operating the camera at the moment, as you see Taiwo Ralu come yeah, out of a screamer intercept. of an intercept. Oh, nothing called there. I thought that was a bit late. Have a look. Yeah, lovely. That's oh, me coaching, sorry. Have a look. <laughs> I do think England put themselves at risk then because that, that ball after the intercept was given in this far near channel to us but then it was swung across all three channels mm. and that is a, that's a dangerous move. Yes. So they're lucky to come away with that. I think now it's going to be really tempting to, to yeet it in but I think still work on that structure. Nice front ball, front space from Rowan and a lovely high shot again. Defence are being called out quite a lot here in this shooting circle by this umpire, so he needs to adjust, especially as he's the only one in the circle now. Oh yes, of course, yeah, absolutely. Just put a bit of um, bit of pressure on the shot again, but try and stay clean. And I think as well, we spoke at the start of the game about the Jamaica Granada game and the scoreline there, which, mm. as a reminder, was 56 to 20 in favour of Jamaica. We are currently 15 to 14 with three minutes left, so so fairly similar. Mm. Yeah, I think we've restricted more goals. Yeah, for um, Granada, so defensively possibly a little bit stronger. Just need to settle here. Coming fast down that court, but someone needs to take responsibility just to set. Oh, oof. Just interfering with his landing space there. Needs to give him space to land. He's okay. Shot goes straight in. You can see McCartney Oliphant and Firminger signaling number one, so it's obviously a set play that's happening here. Yeah. Pointing to the players behind them to take that centre pass so that they can set something up for the second phase, I think. Oh, the keeper's just in no man's land a little bit. I know he's got two to deal with, but perhaps maybe picking a player and seeing what he can do, because he was sort of floating in the middle, um, so both options were actually available for, for Ross to feed. Yeah, we did see a lovely screen there from Weaver, and we've seen the goal defence has now re-entered the court with just over two minutes left to go. Oh, a nice and easy pick up for yeah. Alou there. Straight through the middle there. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Oof, a, little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of a drag there. They was lucky to get away with that, I think. Might have been might have been helped a little bit on the way. So maybe the umpire let that one go. Nice. Oh, oh. oh not again, Roman. No. He's alright, stay up. His head this time. <laughs> Didn't hit the head. It's all good. But good sportsmanship from yeah. the goalkeeper, yeah. immediately offered him a hand up. It does look to me as if that ball is coming down when, when he's, yeah. he's tipping it. Yeah. Um, I think like he needs to just tidy that up and perhaps just put a bit more pressure over the shot rather than jump in because, oh wow, what a ball, what a rotation. Oh, McCartney, Oliver, yeah. you are just giving it all tonight. <laughs> We're getting the show-stopping performance, really pulling out all the stops. All right, can England finish strong now? Yeah, so it looks like there's just under a minute to go. We're on 53-14, I think. Yeah, not much. 
that Alou could do no. about that jump shot. Nice oh. fastball. Rowan just clears decision. out the top to give James Firminger all the space there. That was nice. But I think the decision from Lake to give that to Firminger mm. rather than the, the higher risk pass. Yeah. And then Firminger just letting the ball do the work. Really good game smarts. So Grenada then, can they get another goal on the board before the oh. end of the quarter? He collects his own rebound. Contact has been called. Will he jump it or will he take a normal shot? Let's see. So Alou being told he must be beside and away. Yeah, just not quite in the right position. Um, stood a bit too far out of play maybe. Oh, take bullet pass, one long second range left. shot. Uh, had to, to go be. for that, had to go for that with one second left. Absolutely, and there we have it, 54 to 16 in favour, or possibly 55 to 16. We'll just query that score. We do have a slight difference to what is on the bench. And that is the end of game four of this, the America's Netball Men's Netball Championship. And Lou, I'm gonna put you on the spot once again. If you had to pick a player of the match, I'm gonna elongate the sentence so you have a little bit of thinking time. Oh, if you yeah. had to pick one, who would it oh, be? Oh, you really put me on the spot. I think I'm gonna to have to go for Ross for those feeds. Oh yes, very um, nice. He, he, I mean, he come on in at centre in a, in a position that he's not used to playing and he gave it his all, he gave it a really good shot. He got moved then into wing attack, which is um, his most preferable position and more comfortable. I mean, you can just see yeah. that he was more comfortable there. Yeah. Um, um, I applaud his vision and some of those some of those balls straight into the circle. Like we said, that connection between him and Rowan Weaver was exceptional. Um, so yeah, I think I'll go for Ross this time around. I think he did a, a sterling job. Yep, love that. Excellent choice. Well, thank you very much, Lou Granger. Thank you very much, Taryn Mars, my glamorous assistant. It's been lovely having you on comms and camera once again. Now, we will be back tomorrow. We are in the island of St. Kitts tomorrow. And we are going to be facing the host nation of St. Kitts and Nevis. So that is going to be 5.40pm local time, which is 10.40pm UK time. So not one to be missed. We'll see you courtside tomorrow.